Good day everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this series of videos I'm calling Backyard Revealed, I'm going to show you what's there to do, places to visit, restaurants to dine in, all within driving distance from the town of Gola that I live in. Today, you're following me to Port Adelaide, a suburb full of history, rich in story of hope and tragedy, resulting in it being one of Adelaide's most active paranormal locations. Is this Adelaide's most haunted suburb? Come along with me to discover these stories. G'day guys and welcome back to another one of my Backyard Reveal episodes and today I'm taking you around this beautiful precinct of Port Adelaide here in South Australia which is just a short distance from the state capital of Adelaide. Well, without further ado, let's get this journey started. Let's do this. Port Adelaide is located some 14 kilometers from Adelaide's CBD. From this vantage point, you can actually see the city right there. For me in Gola, it's a 45 minute drive down south on the Northern Expressway. From 1840, Port Adelaide played a significant role in the formative decades of Adelaide and the state of South Australia, serving as the state's seaport and the main supply and information line to the rest of the world. Before modernization took over, the port was a hive of activity during the 1800s, which saw rapid expansion of the port and its surrounding areas. That meant the town grew rapidly as well. This resulted in Port Adelaide having an impressive range of commercial and institutional buildings and South Australia's largest concentration of colonial buildings many of which are heritage protected till this day. As the 20th century rolled in, the construction of another port in Outer Harbour meant that ships no longer had to sail down the river to get into Port Adelaide. Slowly but surely, the original port continued functioning knowing its days were numbered. In the 1960s, containerization was introduced in the Outer Harbour and the decline of Port Adelaide sped up, leading to a sharp reduction in retail activity, draining of the local populace, and eventually, the streets became empty, derelict, and neglected for many decades afterwards. A lot of the original warehouses which supported the port in its heyday still remain relatively intact, making for some amazing backdrop for dramatic storytelling. From here, we begin our journey into the paranormal and travel through Port Adelaide's sordid history of tragedy for some unlucky individuals and their unwillingness to move on. We start this paranormal adventure at the Port Admiral Hotel, which was built and opened in 1849 as the Railway Hotel. A subsequent owner renamed it to Port Admiral and the name has remained ever since. In 1970, the port officially closed and the town was left in disrepair and neglect. Many locations died a slow death over decades and Port Admiral Hotel finally closed its doors in 2006. It was then given an extensive makeover and the hotel finally opened again in 2018 and it's often hailed as a symbol of Port Adelaide's economic recovery. This hotel is officially known as the oldest surviving building in Port Adelaide. The upstairs area is known to be where the hauntings happen. It is believed to be the spirit of an old schoolmaster who killed himself in one of the bedrooms here. And he has been known to walk the hallways resulting in unexplained footsteps and a general feeling of unease. A dedicated schoolmaster unable to clock out from his work? Now that is commitment. A major catastrophic flood event in 1865 highlighted the need for land reclamation. This caused the street level to be raised by some 9 feet 
and many buildings losing their ground level space, which has now become their basement. Port Admiral Hotel is one such building. Can you believe this was once street level? A visit here isn't complete without a meal. So we decided to settle down for lunch and the menu definitely piqued my interest. I observed the main options use a lot of Asian ingredients so we were in for some fusion experience. Unfortunately, my dealings with fusion in Australia have always been less than stellar. But I'm game to give it a go. So here's your chance, Port Admiral. Lip sync for your life and don't fuck it up. Shallot pancakes were amazing. Puff pastry was light and fluffy with the insides filled with savoury shallots. The dipping sauce was a soy vinegar mix which should be bottled up. This is a very good start. Next was the Masaman beef ribs, which arrived lukewarm. Strike number one. The main star which is the beef ribs was fork tender, so I hardly used the knife. But man. The curry was weak, and because it was no longer warm, the curry was starting to solidify. Strike number two. A masaman curry is supposed to look rich in a colorful, deep brownish, sometimes reddish gravy, and a layer of grease oozing out from it, which could only come from the maturity of sweating out a curry paste and slow cooking in a braise. This one presented to me was none of that. Strike number three. I'm sorry, Port Admiral. You need to sachet away with your fusion attempts. Think I'll stick to pub classics next time. With lunch out of the way, we're on our feet again. We've all heard of haunted hotels, homes and buildings. But where else can you find a haunted street? Welcome to this fascinating location of Lipson Street considered to be the most haunted street in Port Adelaide. We begin with the Lipson House, which has a resident ghost known to show itself to unsuspecting people in the basement. That ghost has also been known to become physical with reports of people getting touched, or worse, pushed around. The presence of this ghost is always accompanied by an overwhelming stench of old tobacco. In the early hours of the morning, there have been sightings of a boy who lost his life on this very street in 1901. It is believed to be the ghost of Alfred Johnson, who died when he was flung off a horse cart where he landed headfirst onto the street. He never regained consciousness and passed away a few hours later. He now wanders this street looking lost and perhaps wondering where his family has gone. What could be more iconic than the Port Adelaide Lighthouse located here? The original location of this lighthouse was at the mouth of Port River. It was decommissioned in 1901 and moved here. Several lighthouse keepers have reported an unexplained paranoia which overcame them during their shifts. There are also reports of disembodied voices of children playing around the bottom of the lighthouse and unsubstantiated rumours say that they are the spirits of two children who went missing here in 1980. Another ghost hanging around is that of the lighthouse keeper named George, who disappeared one day after going fishing. His body was never found. So he could have returned to make sure the lighthouse is still functioning like the dedicated keeper he is. This is the story of Chinese sailor Li Bao Sung. In October 1944, as his ship sailed into Port Adelaide, he was being tortured and beaten to death by his shipmates. His body was found floating in a river wrapped in a blanket with a bag over his head. Police also found two three-inch nails driven into his skull and a cord was also coiled around his neck. 
Although there were two suspects tied to his murder, trying to extradite them back to Australia for a trial proved to be near impossible. This was Australia's first case of extradition too. Since Lee never got justice for his death, he has been heard moaning around the wharf, crying at the injustice he has suffered. His body is now buried at a nearby cemetery. The final location for today's walk is the Lighthouse Wharf Hotel, which is singularly one of the most active locations in Port Adelaide. It is home to not one, but three resident ghosts. The Art Deco Hotel was opened in 1935. Let's start with Hamish, who loves playing tricks on unsuspecting visitors. There is also an old man who hangs around upstairs in the accommodation level, and he likes to lock people out of rooms. He also makes himself visible wandering the hallways. And finally, the friendly boy who lives in the basement. His normal tactic is smiling at you before disappearing into thin air. Before we say goodbye to Port Adelaide, we head into El Law Cafe for a warm cuppa and to take in the relaxing surroundings. The peace and tranquility really sits in contrast to the tragic stories I've uncovered for this trip. It's incredibly fascinating and I'm pretty sure I've only scratched the surface. Do you have a Port Adelaide story to share? And that's right guys, that was Port Adelaide for you. Isn't this such a pretty suburb full of history lots of stories and more than what I can uncover really. So there's really so much to Port Adelaide. I'm pretty sure uh, we can do a few episodes on it. So this gives you just a little preview on what Port Adelaide is all about. So if you've watched the video up to this point, I'd like to thank you for all your support. Join the conversation in the comment sections below so you can let me know what you think of Port Adelaide. Do you want to come here to visit after this? And um, have you been here? What are your thoughts of um, Port Adelaide, let me know in the comments below. And share this with a friend who might be coming to Adelaide and he doesn't know where to go. So Port Adelaide is a pretty nice place for you to walk around to discover the stories over here. All right, so uh, in the meantime, I'll chuck my details of Instagram on your screen somewhere up there. So you can give me a follow there. It gives you an idea of the kind of videos that will be coming up on my channel. And more importantly, don't forget to subscribe so you do not miss out on the next episode of this Backyard Reveal series, alright? So I'll bid you farewell from here and I'll see you for my next video. Bye!